Laptops just keep getting more and more powerful and more powerful and more powerful, which is why it's awesome. Anytime I talk about laptops, we get the same groups of comments. Laptops are dumb, laptops are overpriced, laptops are just irrelevant. Well, that's from somebody who's probably never left their basement. But if you've ever left the home and needed to take a computer with you, having a nice powerful laptop that can travel with you is definitely a nice to have and for many people a must have. I traveled for years all across the country when I worked for the software development company to our different offices and having a laptop was absolutely important. The problem was I had a really crappy HP laptop that was assigned to me by the company that couldn't even play League of Legends. So I carried my own gaming laptop with me and it sucked carrying two laptops everywhere I went. So having a combo unit like this, which is basically a desktop replacement for the most part, is amazing for people that maybe are in college and don't want to bring a tower with them or they travel or maybe they just like having an option of having a laptop sitting there in their bedroom so they can play games without having to get up and go to their big tower somewhere. There's a ton of use cases for laptop. So for today's video, I'm going to be talking to those that are interested in laptops. This one features the new 4090 RTX Mobile Edition graphics, which I want to see where it lands because the problem with the Mobile Edition graphics is always, it says 4090, but it's going to be like a 3070 desktop performance, right? So I still think there needs to be a different naming scheme or naming structure for mobile laptops like they used to have back in the day, rather than the confusion of making it sound like it's some sort of a full scale, full size 4090, because it's not. Because the power brick that comes with this thing, which is also the weight of a laptop in its own, is a 330 watt brick. That is not even enough power to power a desktop 4090 FO load. So you can see why I'm saying like the 4090 thing is kind of disappointing, but that's not Origin's fault. That's just the way NVIDIA is doing things. Now, in terms of the form factor of this guy is definitely bigger and thicker than many of your laptops, but it's certainly gotten smaller versus what they were like even just 10 years ago. 10 years ago, a laptop like this would have been twice as thick and it would have just been loud. It might have even had an optical drive. Um, but we have, this is actually for all intents and purposes, a heck of a lot smaller and lighter than it would have been for any hardware at this level. It's got a one terabyte uh, NVMe SSD for the OS and a two terabyte NVMe SSD for uh, games and mass storage. The amount of cooling on the bottom, as you can see, it's a pretty massive amount of ventilation on there. You can even see the RAM through there because there's so much ventilation. We will open it up and take a look at expansion though. In terms of cooling, you can see massive ventilation on the back. We've got some ventilation on the side, intakes on the bottom. So airflow to this is gonna be important, especially when it comes to the level of um, hardware that we have in here. So being flat on the table like this, although it, it's designed for this type of use case, I feel like having some sort of a pedestal to sort of get it up off the table for better airflow, or even a cooling plate that has like a built-in fan to blow fresh air into the bottom would be beneficial. If you choke off these vents by putting it on a bed, on a pillow, on your lap, you're gonna start throttling the hardware pretty significantly. Um, but anyway, with that said, I wanna go ahead and open it up um, and, and kind of take a look. Then we'll start talking about the screen specs and all that because in my opinion, laptop manufacturers for years have kind of been just, I don't wanna say lost, but they'll do things like, let's put a 2050 mobile graphics with a 4K screen at 15 inch. It's like, just, it's like that, that line from Jurassic Park. Yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. So let's go ahead and, not beat it to death, but let's go ahead and open this up. If it can't handle this, it can't handle, you know, being passed around in a TSA air, you know, bin or in a backpack being shoved into carry-on storage and stuff. So anyway, let's open it up and see what the inside looks like. Now, one thing you might notice on the label here, and though it's upside down for you, this is a Clevo uh, branded laptop. So what happens is there are ODM, OEM manufacturers that will like order the chassis and such um, from various ODMs. And then they do their own touches, like what you know, hardware do they want to put it in, what, what RAM, what storage, you know, et cetera. So if you see the word Clevo on there and you're wondering what that means, um, just a little explanation for you. So far, getting to these screws are pretty easy. They're pretty decent sized screws too. Like sometimes these screws are very tiny and you get worried about stripping them out. But access to the internals of a laptop to me are very important because let's say later you decided you need more storage 
or you need some more RAM, or you want to upgrade your RAM sticks to something faster, can you access it? Can you do these updates yourself, or do you have to send it in? Because sending it in means downtime, risk of damage during shipping, you know, all the things you just don't want to have to deal with. This slides off the rear, and then, yeah, so you can lift it up from the rear. So you don't need a suction cup. This is metal, by the way. Just wanna point that out. Here is our shared vapor chamber heat pipe system. Each one of these fans is on top of either the GPU or the CPU. I'm not sure which is which. I think this is GPU here and this is CPU. Um, so they do have shared heat pipes that go across to these fans. So you can see they pull in air through here. Actually, that's exhaust and that's exhaust. So they'll pull in there and exhaust centrifugally out the sides. This battery right here, 99 watt hours at 15.2 uh, volts. So this is literally the biggest battery that you can carry on an airplane. Let's talk about battery life real quick though. Um, there's a couple of things you need to think about when it comes to battery life. One, this is like the highest spec laptop that you can personally get at the time of making this video. It's got an RTX 4090 mobile in there. It's got a high-end 13th uh, series processor. If you're concerned about battery life, you're gonna need to, one, lower your specs, or two, really do some fine tuning when it comes to how your operating system is utilizing the hardware to be able to give you the best battery life on battery power. Obviously, you're not gonna put this thing on battery power and then start trying to gain, think you're gonna get ultimate performance. However, if you're using this in, a, in, a, in an office type environment, you know, it can switch to the iGPU built into the Intel processor. It can lower its power rating. It can lower all of the brightness and stuff to be able to give you the maximum power life or battery life. And it's been getting better on Intel systems slash Microsoft systems versus like, it's probably never gonna be as good as like Apple because Apple's ecosystem is so good when it comes to battery conservation, but it's getting better. But again, this laptop here is really not just aimed towards gamers, it's aimed towards people that need max performance. Remember, we've talked about this a million times in the past. Gaming computers make amazing productivity computers. They tend to have a lot of RAM. They tend to have fast graphics in them, which is what most office type software these days or any, any sort of rendering or editing software can utilize the GPU, making it a great productivity system. So it, a dual purpose rig really is a gaming system. So when it comes to drives, you can see we have Samsung Evo drives in here already. I should probably make sure these are not the ones that need to be updated. Okay, they're not. <laughs> anyway, we have a one terabyte drive and a two terabyte drive in here, but check this out. We have a third NVMe available to us right there. So that's why I wanted to open this up and take a look. We have a third drive available. So that's nice to see. Um, they do have thermal pads touching their controllers on here. This is a one-sided drive. That's a copper heat plate on the back right there, which is like a heat spreader. Anyway, all of our NAND is right there, which is actually touching the thermal pad. But what I want to take a look at is that if that's the one terabyte drive, is the two terabyte drive double-sided? Same thing. Look at the thickness of that pad right there. That pad is not actually doing anything, I think, but just kind of supporting the drive. That is thick. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um, yeah, so that is touching this, which is kind of, I guess, just dissipating some of the heat. Maybe some drive testing in the future would be uh, a nice thing to do, just to kind of see, are the drives going to throttle in any way? But the NAND is touching right here, which will give it some heat dissipation, and they are right next to the cooler, although it doesn't blow this direction, so the drives are just sort of being passively cooled. You do know NVMe drives that are pushed really, really hard will throttle, so it's important to check that out. This is our DDR5 right here. You can see we have two sticks of DDR5. Only two DIMM slots available to us. This is double-sided, so there's chips on both sides. On our so dim, uh, this is DDR5. It looks like 60, 64 gig kit at 4,800. So it's 4,800 megahertz, 64 gigs. That shows you how far laptop memory and stuff has come because Usually you would not get 64 gigs with two so dims. Check out the size of the speakers right here. So you can see the speakers are technically a down fire and they're gonna bounce off the side right there. If we look at the cover right here, you can see there's a little bit of a, a opening right there and on the side. So we're gonna have some down fire and some side fire. All right, let's go ahead and button this back up. You can even see where the thermal pads were touching on there, a little bit of grease transfer. So yeah, this is working sort of as like a heat spreader for the drives as well. That just snaps down. That cover goes back on. All the screws go back to where they were. Let's go ahead and come back when this is uh, fired up 
and we'll start doing some performance testing. So in the desktop here, we'll start with the control center because this is basically how you can set a lot of different things going on with your system. Pretty straightforward and intuitive on the top. You know, we've got our system settings, which is kind of all of our clock speeds and fan control and stuff. We've got our lighting area, function key setup, and then this is for our battery charge optimization. I want to point out the battery charge stuff real quick. It's pretty neat because right now it's set to maximum battery charge, which is constantly charge a battery to 100. It's actually not good for the battery to be sitting plugged in and at 100 constantly. So you can set up the recommended battery charge too, which means that it will keep the battery under 70%, stopping at 80. So basically it tries to keep it between that 70 and 80% range which is better for battery health, especially for lithium ion batteries. But you know, if you're like, okay, I need maximum charge for this trip, then you can maximum charge it. It's kind of like how a lot of cell phones and watches and stuff these days are doing that battery optimization charge. Or you can manually set where you want it to max out and then where you want it to start charging again. Just want to point that out. I think it's nice to see the battery charging. It's to call it the flexi charger. Anyway, this is a 13900HX, like as close to a desktop variant of a 13900K that you can possibly get. So if we take a look at our like threads here, one socket, 24 cores, 32 logical processors. So it is pretty nuts. This many threads in a laptop. Now in terms of laptop resolution, this is a 4K panel. So it's 144 Hertz IPS 4K HDR, which is pretty nuts. The problem is not all applications will scale. So sometimes you'll open an application and it's super teeny. And then other ones are like really big. So just keep that in mind. Let's go ahead and take a look at Cinebench R23 right now. I'm not all that concerned so much with where it's gonna land in performance as much as I wanna see what is gonna happen with the temperatures and the fan right now. The fan will probably ramp up pretty quick because laptop fans do. They don't have a lot of thermal capacity in their coolers versus desktop variants. So when it comes to um, their fan ramp speed, it's gonna be important for them to do it quickly. So what I wanna see right now is what is the clock speed gonna go up to and what's the temperature gonna spike at as soon as I start this test. So let's make sure we're starting multi-core and control center hopefully will update while it's being 3915, oh, right to 98C, you see that? So I mean, this is kind of where the TJ Maxx is set for a laptop. There go the fans now. So it drops down to 3.52 gigahertz all core the fans are now taking off. Cinebench is not kind to laptops, if you will, especially 13900HX laptops. So 3.2 gigahertz all core in a test that's designed to really shove as much uh, AVX instruction set down the CPU as possible, which is going to lead to some high temperatures, just as you saw. But in terms, oops, in terms of its performance, it scored a 26,000. 141. To sort of put that in perspective, the 13900K desktop variant scores just under 40,000. So you can see in terms of like the laptop variant parts, there's not as much power availability to it. There's not as much cooling availability to it. But in terms of laptops, if you hierarchy the laptops, this is like top of the chart. Right up to 98C and that's where it stays. But what you'll notice too when we do like gaming testing and stuff, uh, it's not going to go anywhere near that because of the fact that the gaming instruction sets are not they're not going to push the CPU like that. So I'm only mentioning this because of the fact that if you've never used a laptop and, you're, and this is kind of your first time watching a laptop video and you're like, oh, this should be pretty cool. Oh my gosh, those temperatures. This is par for the course for laptops. You want the maximum amount of performance at TJ Maxx as possible. And TJ Maxx is where the CPU for desktops and laptops are designed to run 24 seven within spec without failing. So although that's gonna be warm and people are gonna be freaked out about it, that is where it is designed to run. All right, let me get my, my game library on here and let's see how this thing does with gaming. So this is what I was talking about when I said like 4K screens on a laptop and scaling and apps doesn't always work. MSI Afterburner, which I'm gonna to use to show you the on-screen display stuff, doesn't scale with the OS scaling. So now I've got to like old man eye, eyes this into user interface and then I can bring up the scaling here to something I can see. So just an example, okay? So that, anyway, I gotta set this up for on-screen display now so you guys can see that stuff and then we'll come back. All right, so I'm gonna start here with just doing a little performance testing with Port Royal. Um, 
for a speedway or whatever it is. We haven't tested that yet on the desktop. So we are to start with Port Royal because we have some desktop numbers. Now, if we look at the AD, this is actually an AD103 die. So really it's more closely related to the desktop 4080 than it is a desktop 4090. Not to mention it has 9,738 uh, CUDA cores versus like over 16,000 on the desktop 4090. Not to mention because this is a low, a low watt part um, for being a laptop GPU, it is for all intents and purposes, you know, closer to a 4080 than it is a 4090. But I just want to see where it lands in performance wise. Um, unfortunately, Microsoft Afterburner, or not Microsoft, MSI Afterburner, doesn't seem to have access to the actual GPU die temperature. It doesn't show up on the list and neither does the, um, the built-in like control center. So I don't know what the GPU temperatures are actually gonna be, they don't show. Uh, but we're gonna, you're gonna notice when it starts the test here, there's a significantly lower core clock um, than the desktop part. But if we compare this once again to laptop parts, uh, it's like top of the line, top spec, top everything. All right, so you can see that we're running at just over 2000 megahertz, uh, bouncing around between 19 and 2000. So it's definitely a lower clock speed than like the desktop part. But again, much less power available to it, and especially with you know running off the power brick, which feeling for warmth right now, it's got some warmth to it, but it's not too bad. Remember, it was charging the battery as well. But you can see the CPU is running at 74C, 72C, 71. This, even though this game is purely cached into RAM and doesn't use much CPU at all while it's running, it's very indicative of what it's like during games, though, depending on the game. Its usage, you can see, is 5%. But look, the GPU is only using 172 watts versus the desktop part, which uses over 450. So it's kind of impressive if you think about the fact that a 175 watt part is still able to maintain 2000 megahertz and give us 76 FPS in 4K. Well, technically this is 1440p because this test is a 1440p test, not a 4K test. But, but we need to see where it's gonna score versus the desktop part. Again, this is just for my own kind of like crusade against the NVIDIA naming uh, structure. This will be the highest ranking laptop part available with the 4090, but compared to the 4090 desktop part, which scored a 25,659, 13,659, which is actually faster than a desktop 3090 Strix. But looking at a chart here, it is just under a 3090 Ti. So it's slower than a 4070 Ti gaming by about 800 points, um, which is, to be honest, I know this sounds like I'm just kind of being critical. I'm actually impressed that it's faster than a desktop 3090. And let's not forget the 3090 still uses what is it, 350 watts, 380 watts? And this is doing it with half that wattage? Yeah, let's be okay with that, all right? That's not bad at all. And now that was with the performance setting, so the fans were kind of ramping. I wanna run that test one more time, but what I'm gonna do right now is see how much we change if I go to the quiet setting. The thing is, we're gonna drop, obviously, clocks, and we're gonna drop score. So we went from a 13,675, Remember, we were running at the high 1900 megahertz to low 2000 megahertz. So our new core clock series, you can see, are in the low 1800s. Our watts have dropped down to the mid 140s to low 150s versus 175. And our FPS has dropped considerably too. But look at our CPU. Our CPU usage is up slightly, which is weird, but the temperatures are down. And if we listen, now we're in the high 17s. Oh, there's low 18s again. But this is actually pretty impressive. I can't. Like the fans are just like a slight hum. 11,605, so we lost 2,000 points in terms of score. Yeah, right around an, an, a 3080 uh, FE card, uh, 12 gig, 3080. Still impressive, in my opinion, for 145 watts, because let's not, let's not forget, the 3080 part is still a 320 watt part for a desktop. So impressive generational improvement for the laptop 4090 versus the desktop stuff. And let's move on to something that we know is going to you know, significantly, and we're gonna go back to performance here for a moment because of the fact that we want to start with our max performance. We are gonna to go to Cyberpunk 2077 because of the fact that we know that that, that is a tough, tough title to run even for desktops. Okay, so inside the benchmark, this is the, the synthetic benchmark. Um, it's pretty close to, the game, I mean, every built-in game benchmark is gonna probably score higher than the actual game itself because it's on a track. 
But this gives us very, very solid A-B comparisons, which is why we like using it. This is also ultra preset, ray tracing off is our first test. And our frequencies, as you can see, are a little lower than they were in 3D Mark. Uh, 1950, 1965, 177 watts right there. CPU is at 97C, so or hit 100 per second there, but 97, 96, 100, there it is. Again, scary temps. There are some war there is some warmth coming out of here, but at the risk of sounding like I'm defending the temperatures, I am because it is spec to run that high from Intel. You can do things to keep it lower. But anyway, moving on, we wanna see how this is gonna score in terms of performance. It's very smooth. Even though it shows 44 FPS, 47, 48, it's very smooth because it's very, the transitions are very controlled. So if you're playing the game and moving around, there's gonna be some more what feels like uh, FPS fluctuations as there are. The average FPS right now is 48.84, uh, whereas that puts it down to pretty much where the 4070 Ti Tough is for the desktop variant. The 3090 Ti was 51 FPS, the 3090 was 47. So again, it's landing between a 3090 and between a 3090 Ti, which is just like it did on 3D Mark. Phil's literally over there making a face because this laptop, he was like, what the heck, man? He's like, this laptop's faster than my desktop yeah. at this point. Really curious as to how much FPS we're gonna lose when we go into quiet mode. 600 megahertz and then 500 megahertz, 540, 585. Yeah, that's like failsafe throttle. Yeah. Okay, so we're thinking that it throttled hard on the GPU in quiet mode. We're hitting temperature limit first, and which is dropping power limit and FPS, obviously, in Cyberpunk. Um, the sound crackling is weird, though. Never experienced that before. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna put it back into performance mode after this run and see if the, pe the problems go away. If they do, then we'll know for sure it was everything to do with um, power limit and such. This, the piece of information I'm missing here is the fact that I can't monitor the temperatures of the GPU. They don't show up in MSI Afterburner, they don't show up in the control center. So not being able to see the GPU temp is why I'm guessing because if I saw right now GPU was pegged at 100C or something, then we would know, hey, it's throttling down to 800 megahertz, 700 megahertz because of the fact that it's trying not to melt itself. I would not utilize that in gaming, honestly. I would use that specifically for office use, using Word, Excel, whatever. Um, in games, the fan speed is important because of the density of this die and the power limit. The 175 watts on a laptop part GPU is a lot. That is a lot of watts. We're gonna do 1440p, then we'll do ray tracing. Going down to 1440p is not gonna look bad on this size panel, even with the pixel not being perfect, you know, one to one pixel ra uh, ratio change. Look at that, 91. And it, fidelity wise, it doesn't look any different. And look at the, look at the frequency now. 2115, 2130 for the same wattage. So because the GPU is not having to work quite as hard at this resolution, it could ramp the megahertz up more. And look at this FPS now, look at that. So you can see four, and, and, and visually it looks the same at this 17 inch size to go, I don't need 4K, I want the FPS. Average FPS 20 or 94.62. The 3090 Strix got an 89, and the 3090 Ti for the win got a 96. It's got a 94. So it's again faster than the 3090 desktop custom board part. DLSS off, ray tracing ultra 35, 39, 40. All right, so there was 44.3 FPS. And to put that in perspective, the 3090 Strix had a 43 FPS, so this was one higher and it fell short of the 48 on the 3090 Ti. So we're seeing this consistently land but slightly faster than a 3090 desktop. Absolutely impressive. So the noise, that's the other unfortunate crux of where we are, is with the high power parts and the high performance means high thermals. Um, a 13 series gen, uh, you guys know 13th gen Intel is warm. Desktop and laptop are, are, is no exception. 40 series graphics is warm. Again, no exception. Absolutely uh, the case for desktop as well. But the fact that you can shrink it down into a package like this, into a 17 inch laptop that's a little bit thicker than you would normally see, it is impressive that you can go out and spec a laptop like this now that can basically be a true desktop replacement. Desktop replacement has been like a, 
thing for a while, but it's like a desktop replacement, but, because here's the thing, is dual Thunderbolt on this. You could have a Thunderbolt output on this going to a hub or something that has your 1440p, 27 inch screen. You've got your you know, sound and your, uh, your ethernet and everything connected to the hub and just one plug, plug this in, have it sitting over there upright or vertical or something with plenty of airflow and have it literally operate like a desktop. And then unplug that and off you go. That desktop travels with you. It's a great use case. There's a lot less trade-off that there used to be. The biggest trade-offs right now is going to be acoustics and they're going to run at their TJ Maxx. So anyway, guys, huge thanks to Origin for sending us this laptop to take a look at. We'll be taking a look at one of their more lower, I don't wanna say lower end, it's more mid-range laptop. It's got a lower spec CPU and a lower spec GPU down to a 4070, but it's also a thinner and lighter package. So some folks are like, I can't spend that kind of money. I have no justification for that level of hardware. Well, we'll be taking a look at a smaller version, a thinner version, a lighter version that has, uh, you know, just kind of more middle range when it comes to the, the part spec out. And then we'll see kind of how something like that compares. But the thing is you can spec this how you want it. You can go in the link down below in the description. You can click on it. You can start playing around with the parts that are available in terms of like, here's the CPU I want. Here's the GPU I want. So you can see the options and then really start to play around with like the storage size and the memory size and all that to try and keep this, you know, within budget. And I say budget because laptops at this caliber do cost a pretty penny. However, laptops like this are built and to, to last. And you know, with the fact that it's got the Clevo name behind it too, it's a real solid performer. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Um, link is down below. Tell me how you feel about this. And even if you're the guy that's like, laptops are dumb, can you state your, your reason for that? Other than they're too expensive. Because I mean, that's, that's subjective, that's relative. We, we, need to, we need some real empirical data that says laptops are dumb. Support it, support your reasons. I'll hear you out.